that this particular profile is going to be a combination. In 1991, a muddy, unmarked pit in the Siberian forest gave up its secret. Nine skeletons believed to be Russia's last royal family, the Romanovs. This discovery was meant to end decades of speculation, but it only created more questions. You see, two of the children were missing. For years, this fueled the legend that a princess had survived. But the thing nobody tells you is that the DNA from those bones held a clue to a much darker story. One that would be fully revealed only when a second, even more horrifying grave was found nearby. The Bones of an Empire The year was 1991 and the Soviet Union was crumbling, taking its secrets with it. In a dense, boggy forest outside the industrial city of Yekaterinburg, a long-hidden truth was finally brought into the light. Russian geologist Alexander Avdonin, guided by a secret report written decades earlier by one of the executioners, led investigators to a shallow depression in the earth. What they found was a tangled mass of human remains stained by acid and time. Nine skeletons lay in this unmarked grave, a grim testament to a night of revolutionary fury. The world held its breath. Could these be the Romanovs, Russia's last imperial family who had vanished without a trace 73 years earlier? The initial examination was, to put it mildly, a challenge. The remains were damaged and the scene was chaotic. But forensic experts went to work, painstakingly reassembling the skeletons. They identified what appeared to be an adult male, a slightly smaller adult female, and three younger females. Alongside them were the remains of four other individuals believed to be their loyal servants. The ages and physical traits seemed to match Tsar Nicholas II, Tsarina Alexandra, and three of their daughters, Olga, Tatiana, and either Maria or Anastasia. But right away, a glaring inconsistency emerged. There were only nine skeletons. The Tsar and Tsarina had five children. Where were Tsarevich Alexei, the young heir to the throne, and the remaining Grand Duchess? This single fact sent shockwaves through the historical community. The most shocking fact is, for many, this wasn't a surprise. It was confirmation. For decades, the world had been obsessed with the idea that at least one Romanov child had escaped. Many people are crazy about the story of Anastasia, the youngest daughter who was rumored to be living in exile. Anna Anderson, a woman who claimed to be Anastasia, had fought a legal battle for decades to prove her identity. Now, with a grave containing three daughters, but not all four, the legend seemed more plausible than ever. The mystery, it turned out, was far from over. It had just entered a new scientific phase. Scientists in Russia, the United States, and the United Kingdom began the groundbreaking work of extracting DNA from the ancient, degraded bone samples. This was the 1990s, and DNA forensics was a new frontier. They focused on mitochondrial DNA, or mtDNA, which is passed down directly from mother to child. To find a match for the Tsarina, they needed a living relative from her maternal line. The search led them to the British royal family. Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh, was the grandnephew of Tsarina Alexandra. He graciously provided a blood sample. The result was a perfect match. The mitochondrial DNA from the skeleton of the adult female and the three younger females was identical to Prince Philip's. There was no doubt these were the Tsarina and three of her daughters. But identifying the Tsar proved trickier. The thing nobody tells you is that Nicholas II had a rare genetic condition called heteroplasmy, where he had two different types of mtDNA. This initially confused the results and fueled controversy. To be absolutely sure, scientists exhumed the body of the Tsar's deceased brother, Grand Duke George Alexandrovich. His DNA confirmed the presence of the same rare condition. The science was ironclad. This was Tsar Nicholas II. The nine bodies in the grave were definitively identified, but this only made the absence of the other two children more profound. The world was left with a chilling question. Had Alexei and one of his sisters truly escaped their family's fate? 300 Years of Rule To understand how a family could vanish so completely, you have to understand the world they came from. The Romanov dynasty had ruled Russia for over 300 years. That's longer than the United States has been a country. They were a symbol of immense power and unimaginable wealth, presiding over a vast empire that stretched across two continents. You can see this everywhere in Russia, from the gilded palaces of St. Petersburg to the sweeping estates of the countryside. 
But by the early 20th century, the foundations of this empire were cracking. Tsar Nicholas II was an autocrat, a ruler with absolute power, but he was ill-equipped for the modern world. He was a devoted family man, but a weak and indecisive leader. The pressure mounted. Russia's disastrous involvement in World War I resulted in millions of casualties and widespread food shortages. Back home, the people were starving and angry. The Tsarina, Alexandra, was deeply unpopular. Her German heritage made her an object of suspicion, and her close relationship with the mystic Grigory Rasputin was seen as a sign of the court's corruption and decay. In March of 1917, the revolution exploded. The Tsar was forced to abdicate his throne, ending centuries of Romanov rule in a matter of days. The family that had once commanded the loyalty of millions was now a collection of prisoners. Nicholas, Alexandra, and their five children, Olga, Tatiana, Maria, Anastasia, and the frail 13-year-old Alexei, who suffered from hemophilia, were placed under house arrest. They were moved from their palace to Tobolsk in Siberia and finally to a fortified mansion in Yekaterinburg known as the Epatiev House, the house of special purpose. Their gilded cage grew smaller and smaller, the windows were painted over and they were constantly watched by Bolshevik guards. Life became a monotonous routine of simple meals, lessons, and brief supervised walks in the garden. They were accompanied by a small group of loyal retainers who refused to abandon them. The family doctor, Eugene Botkin, the Tsarina's maid, Anna Demidova, the family cook, Ivan Karatonov, and the Tsar's valet, Alexei Trupp. As the summer of 1918 wore on, the Russian Civil War raged. The White Army, loyal to the old regime, was advancing on Yekaterinburg. The Bolshevik leadership in Moscow grew nervous. They couldn't risk having the Tsar rescued. His symbolic power was too great. The order was given from the highest levels the Romanov family was to be liquidated. In the dead of night, on July 17th, the family and their servants were woken up. They were told there was unrest in the city and they needed to be moved to the basement for their own safety. They dressed calmly and gathered their things. Nicholas carried his son, Alexei, who was too weak to walk. They were led down to a small, empty cellar room. Once everyone was assembled, a group of armed men filed into the room. The local commander, Yakov Yurovsky, read a short statement. The Ural Soviet had sentenced them to their final end. Before they could even react, the room erupted in a storm of gunfire. It was a chaotic and brutal scene. The small room filled with smoke and screams. The bullets ricocheted off the stone walls. Because the daughters had sewn jewels into their corsets, some of the initial shots failed to penetrate, prolonging the horror. The grim work was finished with bayonets. Within minutes, 11 people lay on the floor. An entire dynasty extinguished in a dark, bloody cellar. But the final act was not just about ending their lives, it was about erasing them from history itself. The world's obsession. The events in the cellar were just the beginning of a cover-up that would spawn one of the 20th century's most enduring legends. What many overlooked is that the executioners had no clear plan for what to do next. Their immediate task was to dispose of the remains so that no trace of the Romanovs could ever be found and no grave could ever become a shrine for monarchist sympathizers. They wrapped the remains in bedsheets, loaded them onto a truck, and drove them into the Koptiaki forest under the cover of darkness. Their first stop was an abandoned mine shaft called the Four Brothers. They stripped the remains of their clothing and jewels, poured sulfuric acid on them in a crude attempt to make them unrecognizable and tossed them into the shaft. But the plan was already failing. The mine shaft was too shallow and the water at the bottom didn't fully conceal what they had done. Panicked that the advancing white army would discover the site, Yurovsky ordered his men to retrieve the remains. The grim and gruesome task of pulling them back out of the mine began. In the frantic and chaotic hours that followed, the men tried to destroy the remains further, burning two of them and burying the rest in the hastily dug pit on a cart track that would be discovered in 1991. This is where the story takes a critical turn. Two of the children, Alexei and one of his sisters, were taken to a separate location, burned, and buried in a second, smaller pit. This act, likely done to confuse anyone who might find the main grave, was the very thing that allowed the myth of survival to take root. Because the Bolsheviks kept the details of the event a closely guarded secret, rumors began to swirl almost immediately. 
With no official confirmation and no remains, anything seemed possible. And you can see this everywhere in the aftermath. People wanted to believe that some of the innocent children had been spared. This hope soon coalesced around one figure, Anastasia. In 1920, a young woman was pulled from a canal in Berlin after a self-inflicted harm attempt. She refused to give her name and was placed in an asylum. Eventually, she began to claim that she was the Grand Duchess Anastasia, telling a dramatic story of being wounded in the cellar and rescued by a compassionate soldier. This woman, who became known as Anna Anderson, was the spark that lit a fire of global fascination. Her story had everything, a lost princess, a hidden identity, and a claim to a vast fortune. For the next 60 years, she became a polarizing figure. Some former Romanov relatives and servants were convinced she was the real Anastasia, noting her resemblance to the princess and her knowledge of intimate court details. Others dismissed her as a clever imposter, pointing out that she couldn't speak Russian and was likely a Polish factory worker named Franziska Shanskowska. Her legal battles to be recognized raged for decades, turning her into a living legend. Books, plays, and movies were made about her, cementing the Anastasia myth in the public imagination. The missing children from the first grave seemed to lend her story a powerful air of credibility. How could anyone prove she wasn't Anastasia if the real Anastasia's remains were nowhere to be found? An unbreakable code. For 90 years, the mystery of the two missing Romanov children remained history's most tantalizing cliffhanger. The discovery in 1991 had answered many questions but had left the most important one open. While the Russian Orthodox Church and some Romanov descendants continued to doubt the authenticity of the first set of remains, the scientific community moved on, certain of their findings, but frustrated by the incomplete puzzle. The legend of Anastasia, kept alive by Anna Anderson until her passing in 1984, still cast a long shadow. But the thing nobody tells you is that a small group of local amateur archaeologists in Yekaterinburg never gave up the search. They were convinced that Yurovsky's own account of the events held the key. Armed with historical documents, metal detectors, and pure determination, they focused their search on the area around the first grave. In the summer of 2007, their persistence paid off. Just 230 feet from the main burial site, they found what they were looking for. It wasn't a formal grave, but a small scorched pit. Inside were 44 charred bone fragments and several teeth. The condition of the fragments told a horrifying story. They had been subjected to intense fire and then doused with acid, a final desperate act of destruction. The archeological evidence aligned perfectly with the historical accounts. This had to be the final resting place of Zarevich Alexei and his sister. The fragments were carefully collected and sent to the world's leading DNA laboratories, including the U.S. Armed Forces, DNA Identification Laboratory, and a lab in Innsbruck, Austria. The task ahead was immense. The DNA was highly degraded, broken into tiny pieces by fire, acid, and nine decades in the soil. But forensic technology had advanced light years since the first tests in the 1990s. Scientists used cutting-edge techniques to extract and amplify the fragmented DNA. First, they analyzed the mitochondrial DNA. The results were immediate and conclusive. The mtDNA profiles from the new bone fragments were a perfect match to the mtDNA profile of Sarina Alexandra and the three daughters from the first grave. This proved beyond any doubt that these were the remains of two more of her children, but they went further, performing a much more detailed analysis of the nuclear DNA. Using short tandem repeat testing, they were able to construct a full genetic profile for both individuals. When they compared these profiles to Tsar Nicholas II and Tsarina Alexandra, the science confirmed a clear parent-child relationship. The Romanovs are gone, but their story teaches us a powerful lesson about the clash between myth and reality. Was it better for the world to believe in a lie? Let us know your thoughts below and don't forget to like and subscribe for more dives into history's darkest secrets.